If you've ever wondered what tech that you need to use for your coaching, consulting, service business, or high ticket business, then this is the video for you. Over the years, I've worked with hundreds of online coaches, consultants, and have worked with literally thousands of businesses to help diagnose their tech. Now, choosing the right tech is very, very important. I actually made a video on my channel not too long ago going over what is better, click funnels, go high level, active campaign, and all these other things. The problem was that all this stuff has to connect and it might be specific to your business on what tools and features that you need. And so I'm making this video because I constantly get asked this question about what tech is better than what and how to actually apply it for your business. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what tech should you be using at different levels of scale in your business and essentially why it is important to consider where your business actually may end up in annual revenue because software will apply to what it is that you need to enable your sales, marketing, and closing efforts. For those that don't know me, my name is Robert Miller, and over the past seven years, again, I've worked with plenty of different clients in the agency space. I've had multiple agencies myself, and I've also scaled my own businesses to multiple seven and even eight figures. And so this video, I wanna share the insights that I've learned in order to actually scale the business with the proper tech and tooling. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This video, again, I wanna cover the tech questions and the answers that I would recommend in order to actually scale your business. Again, I've done this with working with hundreds of clients and even scaling my own companies. So that way you can make informed decisions on the ones that you think that will serve you. So full disclosure, I have a company that actually helps build these softwares out. Uh, we do provide affiliate links for services and all that kind of stuff. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna be sharing with you my personal opinion. I'm not gonna be linking anything down in the description below. So if you wanna make a decision for yourself, again, feel free to use this information and then apply it to the business itself. Now, the perspective I'm gonna be giving you is that of a performance marketer, CEO, a financial operations and operations mindset, and the conclusions that I've come up with over the years in that exact order. So I wasn't always a CEO, I wasn't always a FinOps person, I wasn't always great at operations. I started in the marketing space and transcended this stuff after work again, with dozens and dozens of clients, building out their systems for them and then applying the right systems to my business. And obviously we've now been able to scale up pretty high because of that. So let's go over business software basics. Now, the really, really important thing about scaling a business is being able to make better decisions. And CRMs are what enable you to have the tool to make better decisions. There are plenty of CRMs out there, which we are going to cover, but I wanna cover these basics because CRMs are essentially business intelligence tools. They're not just glorified spreadsheets. So once you vet and pick the one that's absolutely uh, perfect for your business, then it's about abusing the software for everything that it has to offer. So this tool should be something that provides you insights when it's built correctly, rather than scurrying around, trying to find data, having to manipulate it again, or having to build a bunch of different workarounds to get the exact data point that you want. Now with CRMs, they're typically bucketed into two main categories. The first category being a lightweight CRM, and then the other one being a heavyweight CRM. Usually the buzzwords for that are gonna be the all-in-one ecosystem or the everything all-in-one place, blah, 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 marketing messages, okay? And what this really means is that they are either gonna be focused on one aspect of the business and is gonna be naked to everything else, data operations and things like that, or it will actually include everything and it's going to need operations specialists, okay? So scrappy entrepreneurs, maybe like yourself and myself, uh, you know, we have to create these custom fields, create these properties that these CRMs can actually collect. And so we have to think through what data points are actually needed in order to do the end outcome that we want. And so if you, again, you're not a scrappy entrepreneur that understands operations, you may need to hire that out, but these systems can be designed for those functions and for those purposes. Okay. And what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do is waste time on CRMs that don't have the functionality to give them the reports they want anyways. And that's a common problem in the industry. And I hope to solve this with this video is because people are either shilling out different softwares because they're getting an affiliate commission on the back end, or they're just not looking at the scope of their business into the future. And they spend way too much time on trying to retool their softwares rather than just choosing the right one. So there's a few questions that you wanna ask yourself before hopping into a CRM, okay? One of those is making sure that it has an open API. In order to choose the right CRM, this is essentially, uh, uh, in order to choose the right CRM, this is one of the most core foundational pieces 
because if your CRM has an open API, you need to see the limitations to that API. So some softwares will claim they have an open API, but it's essentially blocked, okay? An open API is supposed to be a secure way to either pull data from the CRM or it allows certain activities and different things that are indicated into the CRM to be a trigger for an automation or process. So an example of that would be when I move a person in the pipeline from uh, demo booked to demo completed, okay? That should be a data point that can be tracked when using the right CRM. And there's a really, really big part of data here between static and dynamic. That contact record moving from one stage of the pipeline to another, the movement is a dynamic data point seeing that, hey, how many people I have in this stage and how many people I have in this stage at this current time is static, okay? So you wanna be able to change and see the change, I should say, of that person moving from this to this, and that's how you can actually get conversion rates because you're following the journey along the road, and that's called dynamic data, okay? Now, the problem is that most softwares have their own way of doing this, and some, again, have native integrations, but at times they can be limited. So when evaluating the tech stack, you must determine the scope of that open API, like I mentioned, that way that you can maneuver around its limitations. Now, if the software is extremely limited where it just looks nice, but it cannot connect to these other tools or has limitations in the automation softwares like Zapier or Make that you try to, to pair it up with, I would suggest moving away uh, from that software and working with something that's a little bit more up to date or a friendly software for the tools and systems and things that you are trying to accomplish in your business. Now, what aspects should be in your CRM? Okay, I get this question all the time. Now, your CRM should either serve as, again, triggering things for different departments or working together for service deliverability and being able to report or at least house the data that can actually uh, showcase what is occurring. Okay, so typically it falls into the marketing, sales, operations, and finance brackets. These things should all be stored in a centralized CRM with data flowing into it. So if you use specific software, specific CRMs for different departments, that's okay, but you wanna centralize this data, okay, into a CRM. And here are just the lists, I'm not gonna go through all of them here, of what should be included in marketing, what should be included in sales, operations, finance, et cetera, okay? Now, we're gonna cover this because no matter what the CRM actually has, what functionalities it has, there's the human aspect of people actually using the software, right? The soft skill set side. So you need to have buy-in from the team, the team leaders and the executives to hold people accountable to it. I remember with one of my first agencies, we transitioned from one software to the next that had a lot more reporting functionalities and things that I needed and wanted, but the sales team wasn't on board. And hint, sales is what enables your business to even be around. So the sales team is not going to use it or the sales team leader doesn't want to use it, then it's not going to be efficient for the entire sales team or even for your business to make that transition and force it down their throat. Okay. You need to explain why, or at least all be in agreement with the other core team leaders, partners, uh, department heads, whatever the case is, in order to make sure that that decision sticks and you're not having to backtrack with an integration or automations and things like that when you're trying to roll out a new software. And personally, I have a rule at my company now and all my companies that I own, I don't want to hear any complaining over the complexity of the software. If it is complicated or if there's a problem that's actually occurring, let's figure out a simple solution to make it happen. Let's never complain about the CRM and software. It should enable you not take away from your processes, okay? Now, the really, really important part of having that buy-in is then understanding, hey, what things are going to need to be in that in order to enable the team leader or even enable the sales rep, for example, or the marketer. Uh, and so understanding what KPIs need to be set, but also what they need to be looking for is typically a discussion if you aren't familiar with those KPIs yourself. Um, I've built out multiple companies, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with which ones need to you know, be added. As the company grows, more and more KPIs also get added as well. But the ease of being able to drill down and organize your database is very, very key. And seeing where that data is coming in from is what differentiates you being able to make data-driven decisions versus you spending a lot of time cleaning up data, not being able to make decisions. Um, now, when it comes to this, you need to be able to appropriate data to a correlating budget. And I'm mostly talking about sales and marketing right now. 
Because when you have operations going in your business, you typically have, you know, different departments inside of operations or the product and service fulfillment. Uh, but specifically when it comes to communications and front end marketing, sales, et cetera, uh, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate budget for the software. Just because you saw that Salesforce was a great software, but you're a little, you know, one man show, Salesforce is going to completely slow you down, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but it's just not the right place to start unless you either have capital or you're looking to hire people. Okay. Now, the last thing to think about is the emotions about awards and accolades. Some softwares give out partner awards, actual physical awards. Um, I have many ClickFunnel awards, for example, uh, for you know doing multiple seven figures or eight figures for an offer. So the awards and accolades, if you want to have something mounted on the wall from the companies that you're using, cool, figure that out. All right. So let's get into the next stage here, which is the business tech stacks. Now, I would recommend or at least allow uh, people to be in this range of zero to a million dollars per year and use a software called Go High Level. Personally, just for the record, I hate it because when I scale other offers and other businesses, this thing just breaks, becomes clunky, and it's kind of a ripoff of other softwares in the first place. So it doesn't go deep. It just kind of grabs a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Go High Level, okay, just for the record. But Go High Level, for people that are in this range, uh, typically, you know, it can provide a CRM, calendar, pipeline, landing pages, call recordings, and some reporting there. Uh, and then in order to send out emails and SMSs, directly from your sales rep or directly from you, uh, or even in your marketing, you have to use Mailgun and Twilio. There's other ones like Mailgun, but Mailgun has been pretty popular. Now the pros, again, it's like a cheap HubSpot. So you have an all-in-one cheap solution. It's white labelable for those that have agencies. And it's easy for agencies to snapshot if they got a working system with it to actually uh, not only collect recurring and affiliate revenue, but also be able to teach their clients on how to use it. The problem is and the cons are it is a cheap solution so it breaks constantly from my experience every feature is a ripoff from a better product that's out there it has terrible contact syncing especially with attribution as you get more contact records through uh, over time it has bad sales process loops a lot more manual entry than than i typically like and the trigger links that are created are basically sub automations in order to actually make things move through the pipeline and there's terrible feedback loops um, between sales process and marketing with go high level on a qualitative basis, okay? You can get the numbers typically from any software, but it's the qualitative that's really, really important. Uh, now connections between softwares, again, with go high level gets a little complicated. Um, so if you're using all their solutions all in one, then hey, that's, that's kind of the uh, uh, feature set you're getting. Now, lastly, they have terrible third-party dashboard connections and it's really hard to visualize your data and their stuff sucks, okay? I hate it. I would never do it and use it, use it as a, a company that I plan to scale to multiple seven figures. I do have go high level full disclosure for one of my companies, but I don't even run that, that company in regards to sales and marketing processes. Um, and so I'm not really involved in that day-to-day -day process there. We use it because a lot of our clients have used go high level and we've had to uh, retool and relearn essentially how to use it. Now we're pretty good at using it overall, but like I said, it is not something that I use for companies that are hyperscaling, bringing on multiple sales team members and things like that. It's just not a good software for the reporting side. And I'm a data freak. Okay. So level two, one to $8 million per year. This is typically, uh, you know, a CRM upgrade if you're coming from go high level, but it's also going to be creating a little bit more of an operational track. Okay. So keep in mind that the, the quality of the software that you have is obviously going to cost a bit more but it's also gonna require more skills, okay? So level two, that one to $8 million per year range, I usually see people use Close for their CRM. I'm an absolute fanatic for Close because uh, it has CRM, pipeline, sales, SMS, and email workflows, call recording and call reporting, and a very, very granular level. Uh, Active Campaign is the email marketing software a lot of marketers use for calendar solutions, Calendly works, Schedule Once works, all this kind of stuff works, but Calendly has a native integration with Close. Click funnels for landing pages and Zapier and Make for automations. Uh, now the pros of this are it's easier for sales reps to actually just use the damn software. Like I said, getting buy-in from your sales team is very, very important and obviously leveraging the software in an easy way for them and training them on how to use it makes it easy. Uh, other softwares can be more clunky, have less ways to automate. So I like Close for that purpose. Now, it's also great because it actually separates sales and marketing. So even though it has these abilities for workflows and sequences, that's a sales process side, not marketing. So there, they, there are similar features, similar to what Go High Level has, but Go High Level puts it all into like a marketing thing. And I don't want that. 
personally. I want it separate because marketing has its own type of reporting and own type of email and SMS flows that even come from different emails. I want my sales guys to be able to see their reports on their emails going out as well. Um, what's also great is that it actually has uh, something called custom activities. So when I know that a sales call is supposed to occur, like an intro call, they fill out an intro call custom activity, that will give me the quantitative, and because it's a form inside the CRM, everyone can see the log, as well as it can have qualitative aspects that we can pull from, actually run the report and actually get more insights faster, okay? So that feedback loop is a lot better, especially in this software, and typically, when you don't have the data to make the decisions on essentially how those soft points and those sales calls are going, you're making bad decisions. You're making bad decisions because you don't know if it's actually the right call to make uh, or what to change in marketing to help fix that issue and have a trackable process for it. Now, uh, in addition, each one of those uh, status changes, like I mentioned, status of the lead, moving from pipeline to pipeline, those are all reporting attributes and segments that we can actually drill down because close is freaking awesome, okay? Now it is open API-able as well. So it's able to integrate with nearly many, I don't wanna say all, but a lot of reporting solutions that are out there. Uh, Plecto is what uh, Close uses as well. Um, they have a native integration, it's freaking wicked, okay? Um, Close also makes it simple to get drill down features done, uh, has good for rollouts when it comes to the features that are, that are coming out as they continue to develop and, and get feedback from people. And I've just found it to never have issues with feature rollouts where other softwares they may break and they're clunky and things like that. Now, lastly, the best pro is that they have a desktop and mobile app. So when phone calls are coming in, for example, my sales team can take calls on the phone. Uh, on a desktop basis, I'm able to work on it, whether it's through browser or this. If I just want to make calls, though, I have to use a desktop app. But from an operations and, and kind of perspective there, there's no reason why we can't access the software. Some are just login through the apps and what's really, uh, uh, sorry, login through the, the desktop app. But what's really important too is that since it's all in one with calls, text messages, et cetera, it's accessible on mobile. It's not coming to my personal phone number. It's not going to my sales rep's personal phone number. We're not having to create automations to get a notification about things. It's all in there and we can get this information relatively easily. Now, with that said, uh, the cons of this is that it needs to be configured. So it's a blank sheet of paper, unless you're working with someone like myself or you know the team members that we have with our agency to build this stuff out, it is a clean slate, okay? So you need to figure out what data points are key to you and what softwares are gonna get you those data points, okay? It is Zapier and you know make or automation software heavy. So if you're using all these different softwares together, you have to get all this data back in here formatted properly and catching in the proper custom fields. Now, like I mentioned earlier, each status change can represent a data point. So if you don't think through what these status changes mean or have a process around what the communication actually represents versus just clicking buttons are in there, it's hard to gain the insight. So for example, if I change a lead from potential to bad data, as an example, if I'm just marking bad data as just people that aren't a good fit for the program, that's different than it being a fake lead. Right, so each status has to have its own meaning behind it, okay? So that way you can actually pull insights from it based off of a foundation of, of communications. Um, now the reporting feature is also pretty weak in regards to it. So that's why we use those other native integrations. So you also have to build out in, in uh, different reporting softwares. Now the last two things that maybe they fix this, maybe they don't, and uh, we can enroll this stuff now, um, but natively there's no uh, pipeline automations or pipeline checklists, meaning that in HubSpot, for example, which we'll cover, if it goes into this thing, it'll pop up like a checklist that needs to be done. If it's exiting or if it's been in this thing for too long, it'll send other reminders. So it's a little bit more native in the sales process where this has to be, again, reconstructed because it's a blank slate. Now, in the middle market side, uh, this is, again, depending on where your business is at, uh, the dedication of a team member is typically what's needed for mid market solutions uh, or at least a team, an IT team that you build out, and also the vision of the company. And, be honest with yourself if you can actually achieve 10 to $50 million per year. Otherwise, you are overpaying. So you can stay in that that level two category like I showed before, um, before you make the jump, before you make the upgrade. So with that said, uh, close, instead of acting as the CRM where it houses everything, it's only gonna house things specifically for uh, sales. So it's a sales enablement tool rather than... So when it comes to mid-market, this just depends on where you're at. Um, but it's really going to come down to the dedication of the team, dedication of the team members and the things that you build, um, and the vision for the company, if it could actually achieve the levels that you are wanting to hit. 
Wanting to make 10 to $50 million sounds great, but are you actually doing that based off your trajectory, based off your path? Are you going to become a 10 to $50 million per year company? And are you actually going to do it? Um, if you aren't, then HubSpot is a little bit over the top, um, I would say. If you're trying to get there, maybe you're at like five to six, seven, eight, then you can start considering it because you already know how to make five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay. So close, instead of being the CRM where everything gets housed in, it's actually the tool that houses sales data. Okay. So it's a sales enablement tool rather than being an all-in-one CRM. So sales, SMS, and email workflow stay in there. Call recording and reporting stays in there. HubSpot directly integrates with close. And HubSpot is going to have uh, that integration. So it'll pull that data and move things in pipeline if you set it up properly uh, automatically for you. And the reminders from HubSpot can translate down into close because it has exit pipeline automations. So uh, what's really cool about, again, this software, HubSpot, it's, ma- it's meant mostly for marketers and they built other stuff later. So close is still a great sales tool. Sales reps love it. HubSpot is great for marketers. So we have everything in, from an email marketing solution all in one, as well as sales and marketing automations and calendars to be able to tie all this stuff together. Okay. Now, if you still want the award, click funnels, landing pages, go ahead and use that. Zapier and Make are the external automation solutions. Okay. Now, what's the pros about this is that it's easier for sales reps to focus everything on and close. They don't even look at HubSpot if, set it, if it's set up properly. It's a bridge system for executives. So if we look at a sales department and a marketing department, and we are executives that even aren't maybe involved with those day-to-day operations, HubSpot acts as the bridge between those two, and these two can go run on their own functions, and it comes up into nice, sexy reports. Uh, Again, the bridge system for executives for the reporting is just needed overall, and they have some native reporting features. Now, it keeps it a bit separate. There is some overlap with HubSpot marketing solutions as well as, you know, the the ops kind of suite that they have, Um, but it kind of keeps it from a high level. Now, it has great feedback loops, like I mentioned with Close earlier. We already covered that. It's open API-able specifically for the sales process and can route back into HubSpot. Uh, There's easy drill down features, but what's also awesome about HubSpot is that it has easier email marketing reporting, and I absolutely love their email marketing reporting. It also has uh, active and static lists. So if you looked at uh, what we were talking about earlier with pipelines, someone being in a pipeline and then moving to this pipeline, static would just show a snapshot of, hey, how many people are here? How many people are here? Active would be, hey, how many people are going through that process over and over and over? So a good example is uh, if I have a booked call happening in two days from now, when they uh, need a reminder 24 hours from now, they can go... Uh, there can be a list or an automation set up where it's 24 hours prior. And if they go hit that that trigger and it's just a total list, that would be static of all the people that had you know enrolled into that 24 hour before list. But if I made it an active list, I can see how many people are in that 24 hour window right now. Because as soon as it goes past that time interval, it will kick them out. So it may show two people in that versus a static list may show 50. And so it has this natively inside the feature. So it can pull in real-time data saying, okay, how many people are actually in here versus how many people went through? And that's also a great data segmentation piece that you need, especially to look at your marketing and sales efforts to get real-time data. Now, the cons associated with HubSpot is that it needs to be configured for the business and the specific use cases for each department um, and what data points you want to configure. You know, it has lead properties, contact properties, company properties, uh, and other properties as well I'm sure that I'm not even aware of fully. Uh, so you do have to figure out what data is actually going to be mapped out here. Uh, you still have to use Zapier and uh, Make. Now, it is going to require someone that's full-time managing the automations and the comms between departments, but some of that load can get uh, taken off of Zapier's front. So it also has some like counterparty uh, elements that you don't want all your automations in one place because if there's a service issue with that one or a status issue, then your whole company shuts down. So it allows you to diversify a little bit and, and go to the right people to blame them for, for it not working. Um, now, the reporting features are great. Uh, HubSpot integrates with Databox really, really well. Close integrates with Plecto really, really well. So it, again, it just depends on what reporting that you want and how you want to house that data. And again, the more softwares that you layer on to each other, the more that the data has to roll up and you have to connect them. So uh, sales can have their own stuff in Plecto. Marketing can have their own stuff in HubSpot. And if you wanted to see the bridge between them, then you can use Databox or you can use Plecto. You just got to configure it how you want it. Okay. Now, lastly, is the enterprise 50 to $100 million per year. Typically, this is SaaS and you know, having a lot of developers is, is usually what uh, Salesforce teams use, uh, people that, and companies that use Salesforce. Now, similar to the HubSpot close combo, Salesforce, there's another company called Sales Loft. 
It's basically the same thing as closed, but just made for Salesforce. So the sales enablement tool has all that stuff. Uh, Salesforce is a CRM pipeline, email marketing, but what they really have with what HubSpot has with just like automations and stuff like that. Salesforce has basically Zapier and Integramat extremely developer heavy in their own platform. So it's not as easy to use, to be quite frank. And you still have to integrate with calendar softwares like OneTub or Calendly, and you can even use landing page softwares like ClickFunnels. Now they have fantastic reporting, okay? They, it has everything. It has the uh, capacity to do everything because it has it all under one roof, except for calendars to my knowledge. That might change though. Now, so if you are building a really, really big company, obviously the systems and processes and procedures that need to be followed for that are pretty in depth. Now, the cons of this is that, again, it is developer heavy and it is more expensive than HubSpot. And, you know, you have to be at the right level for that right tool. So maybe you're watching this and you have a company that's doing, you know, 40, 50 million dollars per year and you're using HubSpot. Great. It can still support you up to 100 and 200 million dollars per year. Usually if, if you are at those uh, at those levels, though, you just need to know that, uh, you know, what, what's going to be the transition cost that's it's actually going to create for me to move to something like this versus starting that process maybe two years ago, three years ago, as you guys are ramping into that time frame. Um, and obviously you guys are going to learn year over year what things that you need, what things that you don't, what features do you want, what features do you don't want. And so the proper tooling is, is really important. So I know people that will start at uh, the enterprise level and go into Salesforce on like a cheaper package, of course, but they're using it in order to uh, gear up for, for their run. Some, you know, they use HubSpot. HubSpot's totally cool as well because they have some support features that um, other softwares below this may not have and may not have the dedicated support teams to be able to do so. So with that said, I hope that gives you a little bit of a uh, breakdown. And obviously I know there's a lot of information probably to cover in one video, but I get this question all the time. So uh, if I've sent this over to you to watch, then cool. When we have our next conversation, uh, you'll be able to, um, you know, ask questions around this stuff, specifically around your business. And there's a little bit more context behind it. Uh, even if you're new to the channel, uh, I go over marketing, sales, scaling up operations, and I love crypto. I'm all about digital cash flow and digital wealth. So if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.